Hello and welcome to the sixth and final section of this course on Django Admin. In this section, we will learn about the Django Admin and take a look at what next. In this video, we will first find out about Django Admin and along with that also learn about how to customize the Django Admin itself. So let's get started. If you started the Python web server and visited the slash admin URL from the browser, you would be greeted by a login page like this. This is the login page for the Django administration console, which allows access to your web app. You can think of it as the backend access to your web app itself. However, as you might have noticed that we need a username and password to access this page and we do not have a username and password to access this page yet. So to get that access, we need to run the create super user command in the following way as shown in the, on the screen. On hitting enter, the command prompts us for the username. We choose the username admin and the email address admin at example.com. It also prompts us for the password after which the user is successfully created. And after starting the web server, if we visit the URL again, we should be able to log in using our username and password that we chose while running the create super user command. You can see here that this lists the available groups and users from the authentication and authorization module. If you click on the users button, you will be taken to a page where you're shown a list of users currently in the system. You can also click on each user to check the contents of the user itself. Here you can check that the user has been created and has all the various options along with the last login and the date joined. Special thing to note is the user permissions tab where choose what permissions a specific user has. For example, you can choose to provide them permissions to delete objects or to modify objects or even to read objects. If you remember that when we had set up our project, our project had an admin.py file under the block folder. Now that we've taken a tour of the Django admin itself, we'll take a look at how to customize it for our needs. So let us open this file. By default, the file has a single import and apart from that, it is completely empty. This import is the admin class that helps us define our admin classes that will be visible in the Django admin. Our first step is to import the blog post model from the blog.models module. And in the next step, we declare a class called blog post admin, which inherits from the admin.model admin class. Right now, we do not add any customizations to the class. And in the next step, we call a function called admin.site.register, which takes two arguments in the form of the model, which is blog post in our case, and the admin class which is blog post admin in this case. This tells Django to register an admin class for the model blog post. Let us save this file and refresh the admin page. You will now notice that a new section called blog has been created in the admin page and under it exists a button called blog posts. This is the model admin that we just created a short while back. If you click on it, it will take you to a page where you can see all the available blog post objects in your database. Feel free to click on any one of them and explore around. You can also edit the contents of the blog post from here, but generally from a user's point of view, you should not be editing data that is publicly available for the user. In general, the admin is a great place to keep an eye on your system, but editing the data on your system is not a good idea, especially data has been created by the user themselves. So you can now see that with only a few lines, Django creates a model admin for us. So that demonstrates the power of Django, where we can create a lot of stuff with minimal lines of code. Let us take this further by adding something called actions. At first, we define a function called publish underscore posts. The publish underscore post function takes in two arguments in the form of the request, which is the HTTP request that is available from the admin and the query set. The use of this function will be clear in a while. By the name of the function, 
what we want to do is that we want to take in a query set of blog post objects and update them by setting the publish flag to true. Once we have defined this function by adding the relevant update method call, we should now define a list called actions under the class. We set the contents of the list actions to the string publish underscore posts. This should be exactly same as the name of the function that we've just defined. Let us save this file and go back to our admin page. If you refresh this page and check the actions drop down, you will notice that a item called publish posts exists. Along with that, there is a default action for every model admin called delete selected blog posts. The delete selected blog post, as the name suggests, deletes any blog post that you would select and apply the action. Similarly, the publish posts action, which we have just defined, helps us to publish multiple posts at once. Let us try and use it. We select all the blog posts at the moment and click on go. This will publish all the particular blog posts that we've selected. Let us check any one of them and verify that our action worked as intended. As you can see, the published field has been now checked. On a similar note, let us add a function that does the opposite of publish underscore posts. Here, we define a function called unpublish posts, which takes similar arguments to publish posts itself. The only difference here is that in the update method of the query set, we set the publish flag to false. So let us save this file and make sure that we add the unpublish underscore posts to the actions list of the class. So if you save this file now and refresh the browser, you will notice that we now have an extra action called unpublished posts. Let us test this out as well. In this case, we'll just select only one of the blog post object and apply an action on it. And once the action has completed, let us open it and verify the changes. And you can now see that the published ob flag has been unchecked. We can verify by taking a look at a different object to see that the published flag has not been touched since we did not select this object when applying the action. We've now seen how powerful Django is by allowing us to do a lot with only a few lines of code. In customizing the Django admin, we've just touched the surface of what is possible. You can find out more about the Django admin on the following URL. And with that, we come to the end of this video.